Hi everyone, we're continuing with our theme of the five elements. Uh, for today's yin and restorative class, make sure that you have a pillow, a blanket, or a beach towel, a pup named Luke, two blocks, a strap, and just all that good stuff. More pillows if you like. <laughs> so let's start lying on our backs as Luke is demonstrating kind of, we'll begin in Shavasana. And as you're coming down to the floor, if it's not comfortable on your lower back to right away extend your legs forward, feel free to grab one of your pillows or roll up a blanket and place it right across the mat underneath the backs of your knees like this. That can offer some relief. If there's any tension in your sacrum, which is an area of physical focus today as we talk about the water elements. So just Take a moment, shift as you need, maybe turn the head, walk the shoulder blades down the back, unpack through some deep breaths. So we started yesterday talking about how the sister science of yoga, Ayurveda, uh, acknowledges that the five elements of nature are not only in the universe around us, but they are also within us mentally and physically. And when we can harmonize those elements bring a sense of balance of water, earth, fire, space, and air, then it brings well-being mentally and physically. So the water element, also called apas in Sanskrit, is an element of cohesion. If you think of the quality of water, you maybe even close your eyes as you're lying here now and just picture maybe an ocean or whatever comes to mind when you think of a body of water. And so in this body, this emerges as nourishment, growth, and lubrication. Water element cools, moistens, adheres, soothes, softens, smooths, dulls, and spreads. And when you express clarified water elements, physically and mentally, you have a sense of feeling nourished by and connected to your community. It helps you feel content. You're able to express yourself calmly and smoothly and allow things to so-called roll off your back. The water, water allows for assimilation, permitting your food and experiences to become part of you. Healthy water element also insulates your body with a healthy layer of fat, lubricates your joints and mucus and produces clear, smooth skin. It gives you open and non-judgmental eyes and smooth fluid motion in your limbs. When we're deficient in the water element, we can feel dried out, inflexible of body or mind, unable to connect with others or nourishment in general. And so when we're feeling deficient, we can move towards hydrating, literally drinking lots of water or other hydrating natural drinks and foods like fruits, um, eating healthy fats, spending time in person with loved ones, uh, practicing yoga nidra, which is that of conscious rest and moon salutations would tend to be more yin like today's practice, yin and restorative yoga. Now, if you have an excess of the water element, you might feel dull, heavy, have slow digestion, be overly emotional, or in contrast, very insensitive. In such case, you'd want to practice more of a sweaty form of exercise, eat dry and light foods, practice more heating sun salutations, and digestion stimulating postures. So all of this I'm reading out to you from Bunyan Botanicals, an Ayurvedic website. So things to think about when we are noticing, noticing in your own mind body right now as you lie here, how does the element of water play in your being at this moment? And it can fluctuate. How does your skin feel? Even think of what is water in your body, like saliva, the liquid in your eyes, in your stomach. And then how are you dealing with emotions right now? 
And so just using this check-in to see where you're going to veer more towards in this practice, even though it is a yin, a generally cooling practice, but we will be moving in the beginning of it. So if you're feeling uh, deficient in the water element, a bit dry, you might put more effort into that movement, really get things to loosen up, lubricate the joints, maybe sweat a little, using ujjayi breath, mouth closed. And if you're feeling pretty watery already, you might really cherish those long holds and restoratives. And so with that in mind, as you lie here still in Shavasana, I invite you to place a hand on your heart center and the other hand on your lower belly, the area of the sacral energy center, very connected to the water element, Svadhisthana Chakra. So that's a few inches below the belly button and above the pubic bone. You can also visualize it going to your lower back. So with that, perhaps setting a, an intention or a dedication for your practice here. And where your palms are resting, allow a deeper inhale to gently lift your palms. Open the mouth, clear it out with any sound, and let's prepare to chant Om three times. Again, deep inhale. Oh. 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 lying where you are take a deeper inhale very slowly expanding into your belly your lower back the four walls of your rib cage up to your sternum again releasing with any sound open your mouth <sighs> and take a couple more times just like that unpacking with any sound that may want to just move through as you open the lips <laughs> So we think that the quality of water is that of flow, ability to cleanse and purify. Let this exhale be purifying and cleansing as you let any sound flow out to your mouth. Ah. And then from here, resting your two hands on your lower belly, still lying down here, we're gonna begin three-part breathing or Durga Pranayama, excuse me, Luke. <laughs> and just focus on breathing into your lower belly, lower back, and even filling the breath down to your pelvic floor. So that's the lowest portion of your torso. Take a deep inhale there, expanding 360 degrees around the lower torso. Hold the breath in, and then slowly through your lips, empty the breath. And feel the lower torso soften inward towards your midline. And when you finish, place your hands on the left and right walls of your rib cage, but visualize all around your mid torso, even your back ribs, the front. Focus your next inhalation, expanding this midsection. Holding your breath in for a few seconds on your own. And when you're ready, emptying the breath slowly through your lips or through the nose, if you're needing to build a little warmth, maybe a little sweat. And holding the breath out. Then we'll place the hands on the chest. Envision the area of your upper torso, which is the upper ribs, the collarbones, the armpits, the shoulders, the shoulder blades, and in between your thoracic spine. Inhale there. Hold the breath in, keeping your body, your shoulders relaxed, and then slowly empty your breath. Hold it out at the bottom. And then you may want to place one hand on your chest again, one hand on your lower belly to delineate the uppermost and the lower part of your torso. 
and we'll divide an inhale into first the lowest part of the torso then the mid section of the torso last the third the uppermost of the torso and then we'll hold the breath in before slowly exhaling you can choose through the mouth if you need to cool off like if you have a lot of water element or through the nose if you have if you're feeling a bit deficient in the water element so empty this breath to prepare hold it out into the lowest portion of your torso inhale one third pause mid portion of your torso inhale one third pause uppermost portion inhale the last third as you hold the breath keep relaxing your shoulders back and down soften the face and then slowly empty the breath completely hold it out at the bottom for a few seconds then again inhale into lowest part of the torso inhale mid torso inhale uppermost hold the breath in there keep relaxing your body and slowly empty the breath hold at the bottom let's try one more together inhale lowest portion mid portion uppermost portion hold for a few seconds slowly empty hold at the bottom for a few seconds and then try this one more cycle on your own durga pranayama just going at your own pace when you are finished ease into slow balanced inhales and exhales and then again you can continue to exhale to your mouth if you're needing to release heat and you might be feeling quite moist already otherwise exhale through the nose if you're needing to add a little warmth maybe promote a little perspiration And as you listen to your breath by softly narrowing the back of your throat to create a whisper, let's remove any props that might be underneath your body here so that you can extend your left leg flat on the floor in front of you and then bending your right knee, catch hold of your right thigh or shin. Just take a few breaths here. You can point and flex your feet, both of them. Keep plugging your shoulder heads onto the ground and down away from your neck. Now, as you press your left palm down onto the top of your left thigh, just by your frontal hip bone, keep the back of your left hip on the floor and then splay your right thigh open to the right. So your right leg is gonna start to come into half of happy baby pose, raising the sole of your right foot. Bring your right elbow inside of your right thigh and catch hold of either your right outer ankle or your right outer foot. Drawing your right knee towards the floor outside of your right shoulder while keeping the back of your left hip grounded. So we're broadening across the sacrum here, across the lower back. You might picture breathing into that area of your body. And it can also help to flex or point your left foot so that left hip can stay on the floor. And in this supine version of lizard lunge, let's take three more deep breaths. And 
Now, bending your left knee, set your left foot on the floor, turn out your right thigh at the hip, and as you flex your right foot, cross your right ankle over your left thigh like a figure four. Take a moment to just press your right palm on the inner top side of your right thigh to help splay it open while still grounding both hips evenly, both shoulders evenly. And just notice how that feels. So you're gently creating more space in the crease of the right hip as you press the thigh open. You might feel some space throughout your psoas, which crisscrosses and that right hip crease onto your lower back. If you're not feeling much here, then try threading your right hand between your thighs. Lifting your left foot off the floor, use both hands to catch hold of the back of your left thigh or the front of your left shin. And as you slowly bring your left thigh closer to your torso, you can continue to nudge your inner right thigh open with your right elbow or forearm. Just make sure your head and shoulders are still relaxing on the ground here as we take about five more deep breaths in what's also called thread the needle. A supine version of single pigeon pose. So I invite you in each posture and the duration of each posture to really tune in to anything that you feel in sensation form, anything you feel through felt sense, which is a bit more like metaphorical sensations that you might intuit in specific areas of your body. Like an energetic shift of some kind or through emotions especially as we approach the sacrum and the hips. This area can be such a storehouse of emotions. Let's take one more full breath. Let's step the two feet on the floor. And then just set your feet on the ground for a moment in a more neutral position. And just let the lower back unfold on the ground as you lay still. Just a few breaths here. Extending your right leg forward to rest on the ground. Bend your left knee into your chest. Just take a moment to roll out your two ankles circling your feet in both directions. This posture is apanasana or wind relieving pose. In case you ever need to relieve some wind. And then from here, place your right palm onto the top of your right thigh to keep the back of your right hip grounded. Either point or flex your right foot to help with that. Splay open your left thigh and then catching hold of your outer left ankle or foot like happy baby pose. Left elbow is inside of your left thigh. Draw your left knee towards the ground as much as you can keep the back of your right hip on the ground. So as we broaden the sacrum in this posture, you might focus on breathing into that area, visualizing breathing across your lower back. Take another three full breaths here. Are you noticing anything like movement of sensations?
Then bending your right knee, set your right foot onto the ground. Turn out your left thigh, crossing your left ankle over your right thigh. Flex your left foot here. So let's begin by pressing the left palm on the top inner side of your left thigh. As you continue to ground the back of your right hip, gently splay open your left thigh. And notice if you feel anything here, really tune in. Breathe into what you feel. Notice that your shoulders, your tongue, your jaw, your eyes are all still relaxed as you're observing. Now, if you haven't felt anything in this variation of the pose, then continue to thread your left hand between your thighs. Lift your right foot. Use both hands to catch the back of your right thigh or the front of your right shin. And slowly bring your right leg towards your torso while you use your left elbow or forearm to gently nudge your inner left thigh open. And again, still flexing your left foot to stabilize your left knee joint. And as you listen to your breath about, oh, seven more cycles here, can you tune into the sound of ocean waves, whether you're exhaling to your lips or exhaling to your nose? How's your jaw? How are your shoulders? How's the space between your eyebrows? Finishing the cycle of breath here. And then let's come back to that neutral position of stepping both feet on the ground, keeping both knees bent. Feet are parallel, hips distance apart. And just pause and observe, releasing from that asana, what might you notice? Slide your arms down by your sides, really close to your side ribs. And then step your feet back until you could almost touch your heels with your fingertips. Just almost, not quite. Make sure that your feet are parallel. And if your block is reachable, you can even take the skinniest width of one block and hug it right in between your thighs as we're preparing to move in and out of bridge pose for about five rounds. So really slow, gentle bridge. You don't need to go all the way to your highest, highest height of bridge. Just using this to bring some undulation to the spine. Again, inviting that flowing quality of water, especially in the pelvis and spine. So ground the backs of your shoulders. We need a sense of stability in order to create flow. Ground the four corners of each foot, tilt your chin, back slightly away from your chest open your throat and at your pace use an inhale to tilt your tailbone up slowly lifting your pelvis middle back lengthen the front of your thighs forward lifting the chest and when you're ready to use an exhalation slowly lowering your upper back middle back then tailbone last and then keep going at your pace about four more cycles of breath so again, we're not looking for fullest range of motion here. We're just looking for some gentle movement and articulation of the spine as it lowers onto the ground while feeling stability in your feet, your shoulders, the thighs, especially if they're hugging the block.
Feel your collarbones spread open as you take deep inhales when you lift. And then when you finish your last moving bridge pose, we'll take it into restore to bridge by using that block that was between your thighs or using a pillow if you don't have a block and crossing it underneath the flat part of your lower back on your mat. So just adjust it, make sure it's not too low towards the bottom of your glutes or too high that it infringes on your mid back, but it's in a comfortable spot that creates stability to just let your pelvis be heavy on it. Now, you could also choose to stack two blocks if you wanna try going a bit higher or tilting one block on its middle height, perhaps even on the highest height. But again, we're not going for our highest capacity here necessarily. Turn your palms to face up by rotating your upper arm bones externally from the shoulder sockets. And then plug the backs of your shoulder heads onto the floor. Feel that your feet are still parallel to each other. Spread your toes. Feel the inner and outer edges of your feet grounded. And then continue to tilt your chin slightly back away from your chest. So in this posture, also a heart opening posture, let's focus on expanding the four walls of your rib cage. So as you inhale, feel your lungs gently press the front and back, left and right sides of your rib cage. Stretching the muscles between your ribs called the intercostal muscles. And as you exhale, feel the intercostal muscles soften. Taking your time with each breath to help purify your lungs, fully cleansing with the exhalation and bringing in fresh new oxygen with each inhalation. Take your time for another five deep breaths in this posture. And if you think of how water can take the form of any container that it's placed in. You might visualize your breath as water here as you're filling up the container of your rib cage. Perhaps even letting that water spill down into your belly and into your lower back where it meets the block. Taking your time when you do finish your fifth round or this round, 
of breath. If you have two blocks stacked under your sacrum, just remove one block at a time, pausing for a few breaths in between. Or if you have your block tilted on a higher height, you might go one height lower and pause, and then one height lower and pause. Until you're ready to lower your pelvis entirely onto the ground. Are you playing hide and seek with us, Luke? And once your, your pelvis is completely grounded, bend your knees into your chest. And then just gently pump your thighs towards your belly here. So what we're actually doing is just gently rocking the pelvis forward and back, giving the sacrum a bit of, mas of a massage forward and back. And we're also bringing some blood flow into the sacral region. Pumping the thighs away and towards your abdomen. Keeping your tailbone heavy on the floor, hug your knees. You might even cross your forearms in front of them if, if that's available. You might even hold opposite elbows if that's available. If none are available, that's totally fine. Just hug your knees in and ground the backs of your shoulders. Tilt your chin slightly towards your chest without completely closing off your throat. And then try to iron out, sort of say, the back of your spine against the floor here. So from the base of your skull, trace the points of contact down the back of your cervical spine at your neck, down the back of your thoracic spine at your upper back. All the way down, lumbar spine, lower back, all the way down to the tailbone, pressing into the earth. And with that, you might breathe, visualizing breathing from the bottom of your spine, slowly up each vertebra, massaging the breath to the top of your head, your crown, the exhale like a waterfall, rolling down horizontally crown to tailbone. Just take just another three breaths like that. You can switch the cross of your arms as you're hugging your knees. Last breath here. Take your knees with your hands and rotate your thighs apart. Take a deep breath. Rotate your thighs together, exhaling. Keep going a few more breaths, just circling your femur heads at their hip sockets. Switch directions. Or just move your thighs organically. Do like wax on, wax off style. Remember Karate Kid. Let's switch directions. We'll do side to side, keeping the knees together. Horizontal massage across your sacrum. So move at your own. This be more of a creative flow or intuit what your body needs. Five more cycles of breath. You can even let go of your legs and just swim them around if you like. Especially if you're feeling the need to get a little more uh, perspiration. One more breath here. can turn over to one side as be ready to sit or rock yourself forward and back if you want to be active. You can even rock forward and back a few times if you like. 
It will be energizing if you're seeking that. And then as you come to sit, whether Sukhasana, legs crossed in front or sitting on your calves, whatever works for you, just root down to your pelvis. Feel the four points at the bottom of your pelvis. You can even rock back to feel the tailbone, rock forward to feel the pubic bone, rock to the left to feel the left sitting bone, rock to the right to feel the right sitting bone. And as you root through those four points, you can press your palms face down onto your lap and try to lift your spine tall with the shoulders drop back and down and start some Sufi rolls where you circle the spine like a ladle. You're stirring a pot of soup with. Inhale as you move in one direction. Exhale as you continue it. So turn this into a vinyasa flow or breath leg flow, moving to the slow, mindful pace of your breath. And then again, let's invite that creative quality of water's ability to flow and adapt to moment to moment circumstance. So start to move more fluidly, organically, intuitively. Is there any part of your body that wants to move along with the spine? Maybe even circling the arms if there's some congestion in the neck and shoulders, sort of swimming the arms like you're backstroking in the air. Maybe adding some twisting motion with the spine, especially those of you that are feeling some deficiency in the water element. Twisting can help with digestive flow as well. Things moving that need to be released from the body. Keep flowing. We've got five more cycles of breath here. Doing your own water dance. Take up space with your arms, your skull, your shoulders, your rib cage, your belly, your back. Last two breaths. You can even shake. And back to center. So let's prepare for a lateral extension of the spine, which will get us into a deep restorative twist after. Grab your pillows or your blocks, just have them nearby. You may or may not use them. And as I mirror you here, keep your right knee bent open. So the heel is just about in front of your uh, pelvis. Extend your left leg out to the left side. And then you may want to put a pillow or a stack of blocks on the inner side of your left thigh. So laterally extending over to the left side. So as you raise your right arm here, wrap the tricep, that's the outer side of the upper arm forward. Now, if you do have a strap, you could also use it to uh, loop the ball of your left foot with, and then you're holding that right arm overhead wrapping the right tricep forward. If you don't have a strap, it's okay. You can just let the hand be free. And then here, left hand is on pillow or the inner side of your left thigh. Press down to your left and right sitting bones and take a deep breath. Lift your spine with the intention of creating space between each vertebra. Relax the shoulders down. And then exhale, begin to side bend left. You're gonna be here for several breaths. So take your time. Just exploring the range here, breath by breath, root down, especially the right sitting bone. But try not to squish the left side of your torso here. So you're lifting up and out of the left hip, and then you're arcing, arching the torso over. Now, as your left elbow stays on that pillow or block, you can rest your skull on your left palm sort of like you're waiting for a phone call. And if your right hand is not holding a strap, 
you could place your right hand behind your skull like you're on it you're modeling for a photo shoot here kind of <laughs> just make sure that you're also honoring equal space in the left and right sides of your neck You think of sort of zippering up the navel, so draw it in towards the spine, lift it up towards the rib cage, while the two sitting bones anchor down, and then relax the shoulder blades, move them down the back, away from the ears. Be here for about five slow breaths more. Think about hugging in your front ribs here. Making sure they're not popping out in front of you. Let's take one more deep breath. Aim it into the right side of your torso from armpit to hip. You're holding a strap in the right hand, just let go of the strap and slowly lift your spine upright. Ah. Come back to center with both knees bent for a moment and just find a more neutral position to just observe your body neutralize after that. Specifically your spine, side waist. And keeping your left knee bent open so the heel is about in front of your pelvis, extend your right leg out to the side. Place the pillow or block or block stacked on the inner side of your right thigh. If you have a strap, you can loop it around the ball of your right foot, holding the strap in your left hand. Otherwise, just raise your left arm. Rotate your left tricep forward so that you broaden across the top of the shoulder. Place your right hand on the inner side of your right thigh on the prop. Press downward through your two sitting bones. As you take a deep breath, lift up through each vertebra from the bottom. Relax the shoulders down. Then exhale, begin to side bend to your right. Each inhale here as we're finding our range, root down through your sitting bones, especially the left sitting bone, while lifting the spine, zipper in the navel. Exhaling to side bend. And then here you might bend your right elbow onto the top. Flex your right wrist so that your palm is supporting your skull. If you're not holding your strap with the left hand, you can place the left forearm behind your head. Seal in your front ribs. And you lift the right side waist up and out of the right hip. So it's not just dumping into the right hip and uh, squishing the right side. You're lengthening and then you're arching. Let's fill up for with five more cycles of breath. As you finish your fifth exhalation, slowly rise up, remove the strap, and find that neutral position of sitting just for a few breaths. Hmm. 
If you've accumulated quite a bit of heat already, let's take a couple of lion's rats. If you're needing to sweat a little more, just keep the lips closed. So if lion's breath, inhale deeply, press your palms onto your lap or on your knees, stick out your tongue, open your eyes and mouth wide, make any sound, let it go. <sighs> One more. <sighs> and then let's set up for our restorative spinal twist. So grab your pillow or pillows or and or um, blankets and blocks. Place the largest pillow to trace the midline of your mat towards the front half of the mat. And then have a seat with your right hip flush against the back of that pillow as you extend both legs towards your left wall. Keeping the right leg where it is, slide your left leg towards your rear wall. Now your legs are like a capital L. Place your two hands alongside the left and right of your pillow and turn your chest completely to face your front wall. It might require you to swivel your right hip slightly away from the pillow. It might require you to bend your knees so that your legs are not rigid. Lower body is complying to turn the chest completely forward. And then as you start to lower your belly breath by breath onto the pillow, if it feels too far, too low, here are a few things you could do. You could stack one or two blocks all the way at the top of your mat underneath the pillows to create an incline. So the lowest part of that incline meets your pelvis. You could drape a folded blanket across the bottom part of the pillow as a space filler. And if you're gonna turn your face down, you could also use blank, a folded blanket or another block to rest your forehead on top of so that you don't strain your neck and you can breathe. If you're not going to turn your uh, head face down, you can either look to the left or look to the right, which spirals the cervical spine into the twist as well. So if you are looking to one side, just remember which side it is so that you can do the opposite side when we take the second version of this posture. And now as you're settling in, I'll watch the clock for two full minutes or I'll set the timer. Check in with your breath here. Can you still hear the sound of the ocean waves and your own breathing reminding you of how much your body is composed of water? Check in with your shoulders, check in with your neck, make sure they're in restful positions. A few last breaths here as we have 25 more seconds left. What might you feel unfolding in your sacrum here, if anything? What does the body have to say in this pose? And then take a few breaths to begin pressing the floor with your hands and lifting your torso. Rising to sit, 
keep the props just where they are, but turn to face away from the pillow so that both legs are extended towards the rear edge of your mat. Sitting up tall in a more neutral position of Dandasana, stick pose. Just a few breaths here. Noticing the effects of that spinal twist. So keep your right foot where it is. Slide your left leg to your left so that your left leg is actually pointing at your right wall. And turn your chest to face your front wall as you plant your hands to frame the pillow on left and right sides. Adjust your pelvis, maybe swiveling the left hip slightly back, bending the knees perhaps, your legs, so that your chest completely opens to face the front of the room. And then gently begin to lower your torso onto those supports that you've created, adjusting them if the side might need a little more or a little less support. And again, I'll set the timer for two minutes. So remember which way you might have turned your head on the first version of this pose. Balance it off to the other side. Feel your breath balancing in and out, replenishing in breaths, cleansing out breaths. We're down to 25 more seconds here. Gently take a few breaths to press your hands into the floor, slowly rising to sit. And you can move your props aside as we come to sit with the legs both extended forward in Dandasana again. This time you may want to use a strap around your feet as we'll prepare for Paschimottanasana, a seated forward fold. Strap around the feet optional block or a stack of blocks between the knees or between the calves, optional. And then just pause as you're sitting upright, flexing your feet, press the big toe mounds forward, flare the pinky toes back towards your outer knees. Pressing your sitting bones down, lift up from bottom up throughout your spine. Take a deep inhale and broaden your collarbones, lift your sternum. Glide your chin softly towards the back of your throat, lift through the back of your skull. Keep elongating your spine, rooting your pelvis as you start to bow from your hips. So really pay attention as you're taking this forward fold slowly. We're not here long. If you start to curve like a, a turtle back where the chin drops to the chest or the shoulders round forward, let that be your body communicating, or notice it is your body communicating that you've gone past the limit of spinal integrity in this pose. 
So if that happens, you can back off and find where you can maintain even a slight lift and openness in the chest. Shoulders are far away from the neck. And then there's your pose. Let's take the last four deep breaths in Paschimottanasana. As you're pressing down through your sitting bones, zipper in the navel, broaden your chest and lead from it, inhaling, slowly lift your spine. All right, let's set up for comfortable Shavasana using any props that you need here. If you'd like some heart opening in a restorative um, supported fish pose, you can place one block underneath your skull, maybe on its tallest or medium height. Second block, medium height, crossing the mat so that you can lie back and place the area right under your shoulder blade on the lower block, back of the skull and the higher block. For the backs of the knees, you might also use a pillow. Give the lower back some more release, splaying the legs apart. And then if you have a weighted blanket or a folded blanket, place that gentle weight across your pelvis and lower belly rounding sensation with that weight and really take the time to check in how is your body responding in the setup what is it telling you it might need for symmetry this if anything feels uh, congested that you can just make a slight adjustment to Once you've arrived at a position you can comfortably be still in for a few minutes, close your eyes, soften your face, relax your tongue. Imagine the breath entering the soles of your feet, rising all the way up to your legs, filling up your entire body to your crown. Linger the breath at fullness. And then to your lips, slowly empty the breath, visualize it. The waterfall pouring out of your body, crown to soles. Up to your palms, up to your feet. You might try that one last time with a releasing, audible exhalation. As you're ready, completely release control of your breath. Soften your palms, soften the soles of your feet, soften your belly, your lower back. Let your bones be heavy, feeling completely supported from below. Shavasana.
slowly beginning to move fingers, maybe turning the head gently with eyes closed, gently wiggling toes, maybe circling feet, hands. As you allow your breath to gently deepen, perhaps raising the arms overhead. As you stretch the lungs, begin to turn over to your right side in a fetal position, resting on the ground. And just pause there. Staying aware of your breathing, aware of your inner landscape, mind and body. As you feel ready to press the ground and slowly rise, finding your own sukhasana or comfortable seated pose. As we sit for five minutes of meditation, I'll gently guide the beginning of visualization in which you can either close your eyes or steady a soft gaze on one spot. Sitting tall with a strong back, open heart, rest your hands in any mudra that offers you comfort and alertness. Perhaps bringing the palms to stack face up on the center of your lap with thumbs touching. And as you feel the natural flow of the breath, maybe at your nostrils or your chest or your belly or elsewhere. With each natural exhalation, let your body relax deeper into this position. And with each natural exhale, let your mind relax deeper into this moment here now. What comes to mind when you think of the qualities of flow, ability to move with ease, freedom and creativity, ability to express emotions healthily. Perhaps it's an archetype, maybe it's the image of water. Maybe it's a person who demonstrates these qualities with strength. Which quality of water element do you most resonate with? at this moment of your life. Perhaps it's a quality that you would like to enhance within you. Creativity, adaptability, self-expression, flow, fluidity of movement. Choosing that particular quality of the water elements. Visualize yourself in a particular circumstance. Demonstrating that quality. It could be simply the playfulness of just splashing around in the ocean. Or maybe it's more specific.
From the base of your spine to your crown, take a slow inhalation, joining your palms to meet at your heart. Exhale through the lips, bowing in. <sighs> so how might you invite a balance of your water element as you leave this practice? To whatever you go to next. Let's close with one chant of Om. Take a deep breath. Um. The light in me bows to the light in you. Namaste.